Welcome to the MSI channel where I try to resurrect an old MSI 8080 computer. Okay, I wanted to show you a programming language today. Um, you may have heard of it, but I don't think many people have actually uh, played with it or programmed in it. Um, oddly enough, it's why I got my very first job because I knew this language um, back in 19, I guess I started working in 1980. Um, I learned um, uh, this language in probably 1978 uh, while being a summer intern and the program uh, programming language is fourth f-o-r-t-h and uh, I used to do quite a bit of programming back in the day I've forgotten it all mostly but um, it's a very interesting language it's both interpretive and compiled at the same time so on uh, this disk I have uh, uh, F83, um, probably 1983, um, and uh, we can run it. All right, so 8084th, 83, modified June 84, okay. So, um, fourth is a uh, language that's very much like a HP calculator. It is reverse Polish notation and it has a stack. So like in a calculator, um, a normal calculator you say one plus two in an RPN, in RPN calculator, you would say one, two plus. So that's what you do here, uh, one, two plus. Uh, and now uh, there's a number on the stack. And in order to see the stack uh, printed out, you put in a, point, a decimal point uh, period, uh, so three. So one, two, three, plus, plus, so six. So uh, you can put something on the stack, you can subtract, um, you can uh, multiply. So you can do things like that. Um, and uh, so this is the interpretive mode. It's just looking at the line and, and executing it as is, but you can compile things. So uh, let's say we want to create a, a new, what's called word. You say colon, and that says, I want to start compiling. And I'm going to create a new word called dimes. And my definition of dimes is I'm going to take whatever is on the stack, and I'm going to multiply it by 10, right? I'm going to create another word called uh, uh, pennies and um, it doesn't need to do anything. Okay, I'm going to create one called nickels. Uh, nickels, and uh, it's going to multiply by five. So if I have one dime, uh, oh, dimes, one dimes, ten uh, for nickels, twenty. So it tells me how many cents I have um, for uh, what I what I have in change. Uh, might as well create one that's uh, quarters, 25 times. Um, and so I can put things on the stack. So I could say I've got uh, two dimes, five nickels, nickels. Am I spelling nickels wrong? Anyway. Nickels, it I am, aren't I? Spelling it wrong. Shoot. <laughs> um, and I can print these out. So uh, if you print too much, then you get a stack overflow. There's nothing, nothing on there. So um, Nick, Nick, Nickels. There we go. That's how you spell Nickels. <laughs> All right. Don't stop laughing. All right. Um, so. Um, times. Okay. Jeez. Must be early. Okay. So we can have all this stuff now and we want to sum that up, but we don't know how much is on the stack. So if we said we have uh, uh, one, two, three, four, uh, those are all in the stack, but how do I know how many things are on the stack? I can say uh, depth and there are four things on the stack. So depth gives me how many things are on the stack. So I could create a um, word called total, and um, 
I'm going to sum up the things that are on the stack, but I don't know how many I start with. So I'm going to say depth. So now I have depth on the stack and I'm going to subtract one from that and I'm going to do a do. So now I'm going to do a do loop from zero to um, depth minus one. And I'm going to add each time. So if I have four things on the stack, I need to add three times, right? And then I'm going to print it out. And now we have something called total, right? So let's see what's on the stack now. Uh, okay, let's just get rid of everything. Okay, so if I said one, two, three, four, total, it's going to take those things on the stack and add them up. So I can say I've got uh, one quarter, quarter, ah! one quarter, uh, three dimes, and two nick nickels. Uh, so what is my total? Oh, quarters. Uh, one quarters. So if I want plural, and we'll fix that later. Okay, three dimes, one uh, nickels uh, total. I've got 60 cents. So I didn't like uh, that some are uh, singular, some are, so I'm going to say uh, quarter is quarters, and dime is dimes, and uh, nickels, nickel is nick, nickels, uh, and Penny is pennies. So now I can say it any way I want. I can say I've got one quarter, three dimes, one penny, uh, four uh, nickels, and uh, what is the total? 76 cents. So it's a pretty cool language. Um, you can type words and um, you can see that these are all of the words that it knows. And you can see at the top of the list were the ones that we just created. So penny, nickel, dime, quarter, total, um, nickels, quarter. So uh, it's got lots of cool things in it. Um, there's um, a whole... Um, way to save programs, um, which we'll take a look at maybe in a later episode. Um, and um, it's a very nice language that allows you to go um, very deep into the hardware. You're very, very, very close to the hardware, and there's no protection in this system. You can crash the system any way you want. Um, so if you want to um, examine memory, um, uh, well, first of all, let, let, let's show you some other cool things. Um, so I can say um, uh, FF, and it says, what? What's FF? Um, I could say 123. It knows what that is. Um, but if I want to do things in hex, I just say hex, and now it knows what FF is. FF is FF. Um, so now I can just do everything in uh uh, hexadecimal, I can add things, and it's EE, -E. uh, 5, 5, and uh, 34 is uh, 89, let's, let's do a, let's do a 5, 5 plus uh, 40, 95, I'm trying to get something with a letter, <laughs> 5, 5 plus 50, oops, there we go, A5. So it allows me to do everything in, in hexadecimal, which is pretty cool. Uh, I could say octal, and I could do uh, 323. Uh, remember, the 323 instruction was output. I could do octal uh, 323 hex print. So it's D3. So you can convert it back and forth. So we can do memory fetches also. So we can go into hex. Uh, we can say. Uh, Starting at address 100, we want to look at uh, 20 hex bytes. Uh, we'll do a dump. 
And there we go. We get a classic dump looking screen. Uh, let's make it a little bit bigger. Let's say we want to look at uh, uh, 50. There we go. You can start. Sorry. So at address 100 is the start of the new program. So at address 100 is 00, which is a no op. And then at 101 is a C3. Uh, so it's jumping to uh, 222E. Two, two, two e, so it's going to 2E22 two two in address space. Um, then you can see there's some um, over on the right hand side, there's some ASCII. So there's uh, some messages for exit, things like that. So we're still in hex. Um, so we could look at address 100. Um, address 100 was 00, zero. So we can actually do a character fetch. That's what that is, a character fetch. And we get 0. We can do a 101. We can do a character fetch. And we get the C3. Um, so remember, it, uh, address 0 was the value 0. Uh, we could actually change that. We could say at address, uh, let's see, we want to do, um, let's put in uh, 55 at address 100. So we're going to jam 55 into address 100. Let's see if we actually did that. And yes, we did. So if we do a, um, uh, do I dare do a dump? Uh, I think we can, uh, I'm not sure. We could try, <laughs> this might crash. Uh, 120 dump. Oh, it worked okay. I thought maybe it would call back to zero at, at 100, but not. So we can see there's a five, five, five there. So we better, we better get rid of that or the system's gonna crash. So we can do a, um, a zero, 100, C store, which character, character store. So we've done that. Um, okay, so we can read and write directly to memory, uh, very dangerously. We can also read and write directly from um, ports. And uh, we could do, uh, we're still in hex, we can do a FF uh, port. Let's see, I think it's PC, a PC fetch, which is F0. And over on my MSI, uh, my switches were set to F0 um, because that's how I boot my machine. Um, I can change those switches. Um, I'll get rid of the highest bit. And there we go. Now we have a 7-0. So we can talk directly to ports. We can read and write from ports. All right, let's try that again. Uh, let's create MSI. We're going to do a hex. F, 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 zero, do. Uh, we're going to do a F, F, uh, fetch. And then F, F. All right. Why? Why doesn't it know? F, 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 F. Oh, because I'm not in hex already. All right, I need to be in hex already. Otherwise, it doesn't know what I'm talking about. Do fetch uh, store. There we go. All right. So, um, we will, I'm turning on the camera so you can watch this on the other screen too. Uh, we are going to execute MSI. Oops, <laughs> I spelled it wrong. That's all right, I'll just fix it. MSI is MSI. Right. Oh, MSI is MSI, there we go. Yeah, now I've got, a, got two words in there, MSI. All right, ready? Okay, we'll come over here to the computer. And yes, we are running a loop. And yes, it's reading the switches and it's putting them out. So it's doing a, um, a PC fetch and then a PC store. Um, and it'll do that from zero to FF, 
fvf, and then it'll uh, run out and won't work any longer. Oh, there it goes. It stopped working. All right. So uh, we've done our little thing. We could do a count. We could do all kinds of stuff in, in fourth, right? Um, uh, the interesting thing about fourth, like I said, it's both interpretive and compiled at the same time. So you can be, it's very, some people call it a hacker's program, you know, a hacker's language, because you can go tickle the bits right while you're writing the code. You can try things out and then commit them to a word, uh, just like we've done here. Um, and uh, yeah, it's pretty cool.